Hello and welcome to Web3 Unpacked. I'm Rich Pasqua and today we have Daniele Mensi, Managing Director of Digital Bits Foundation. Welcome Daniele, uh, it's a pleasure to have you and we're excited to learn more about your product and your platform. Thank you Rich for having me. It's a great pleasure for me uh, being uh, uh, hosted here and uh, so excited to start uh, and having fun with you. Excellent. So let's just jump in. Um, you know, we're curious about, we always like to find out about our, our, our guests' background. Can you tell us a little bit of, you know, how you got started with digital, uh, digital bits and maybe a little bit about your background and how you got involved in technology? Yes. Um, so I started in, in, with Digital Bits Project back in uh, 2021. Um, I was involved uh, into into growth phase of a project, which was uh, um, defining a new partnership model with a sports organization, introducing product element uh, into it, obviously leveraging Web3, NFT, and blockchain. So I was involved uh, uh, into this growth phase. Uh, I was appointed as managing director of the foundation to bring you know, the project uh, um, on a global scale. Um, I'm an engineer, unfortunately, I would say. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I transitioned my career into finance and alternative finance and fintech. Um, uh, by the time I discovered uh, um, blockchain and, and Bitcoin back in 2015. And uh, at that time, I was, uh, um, I was in the process of becoming an international CEO of a company that was in the, in the path to, to be listed to the New York Stock Exchange, actually was a, um, a technology company um, working in the messaging uh, and cloud communication uh, messaging. And uh, it was a pivotal moment of my career because I've been working in corporates for many, many years before, but I've never seen uh, the alternative side of uh, finance, so FinTech, uh, Web3, Web and the evolution that blockchain bring in the space. I got so passionate and then, and, you know, done so many research and then I discontinued my Web two, let's say, career, and then I've been working uh, within um, the Oxford Business School. I co-founded the Oxford Blockchain Foundation, and from that moment onwards, I never stepped back. I'm on the Web three with the, with the deep of my with deep of my soul. Yeah, I think that's that happens to a lot of us. Where you know, back in the day, you start, and you, and especially if you're in finance, right? So you see the freedom that it offers, literally the freedom, uh, the speed. Uh, an ease in which you can kind of trade globally and uh, you start doing your research and you fall down that Web3 rabbit hole, right? And, and it's hard to climb out of. Uh, you just got to keep pushing forward. And the cool thing is it's there, there is no roadmap. We're, we're creating and paving the roads as we go. So that is super interesting. Now, Daniele, the, what is the primary goal? What are we doing with digital bits? And, and how is it going to help people? What are, what are we doing here? <clears throat> so first of all, digital bits in the landscape of the thousands of uh, uh, blockchain or crypto project is a layer one. So this means uh, digital bits has built an independent infrastructure, uh, which obviously uh, leverage, you know, nodes in a way, which are, you know, physical blocks on, on the cloud that uh, validate transactions it's a you know it's energy things but at the end of the day just to in the grand scheme of things um layer one is an infrastructure that process transactions um which have the goal to create uh, uh the so-called uh brand economy in in the web3 uh what does it mean so the idea of the digital bits project is to decentralize uh, if you remember the loyalty scheme, you know, the membership rewards from American Express and other loyalty programs, all of them leverage brick and mortar solution. The goal of the project is to create an ecosystem where brand and consumer can really, you know, like Lego, Lego puzzle, can really exchange a, a value via a blockchain a, a loyalty points, let me say in brackets, in a way, or reward points. And the whole, so the heart of the of the project is to make this possible in a simple manner for both brands and consumers. Mm, mm. 
Yeah, that's interesting. And we have tons of questions about the, the kind of marriage of brands and, and the rewards points. Can you, can you, we meet with a lot of different organizations, not a lot, but that are in the Web3 reward space. How is Digital Bits different from everyone else? Let's go. I mean, we start from the end and then we go back to the beginning. Yeah. What is the issue? Or well, at least what we feel is one of the big issues for brands today. Uh, the big issue is that all of them know was uh, an NFT. All of them knows what is a cryptocurrency or a fungible token. They all know that token. They all know that. They're not fully embracing it. Why? Because the journey to onboard the non-crypto or the non-Web3 or the non-yet Web3 people, it's complicated, it's clunky because there are cumbersome user experience. Uh, there have to be multi-steps. People just want to do one or two clicks to do something. And right now, uh, crypto, uh, you know, crypto applications require multiple steps of validation. But obviously, for me and you that are in crypto since many years, we don't pay too much attention because we love to be part of it at the pace of customer experience, user experience. But for people that are not yet, then it's complicated. So coming from the end to the beginning. So the issue that the brands have today is they know where they want to go. They know they want to enter the metaverse. They know they want to create a, you know more interesting and enticing loyalty schemes. They want to have collectibles, but they want to enable a journey which is being sustained over time. So what we have done, we've started by the first step, saying, let's enable this journey. What is the first step to enable the journey? Well, you need to have a Web3 wallet, okay? And then you need to start and you need to make the first transaction to be on chain and to be engaged over time with the series of valuable interaction, okay? So you can see the, the Web3 wallet as a mean to give independence to the consumer to stay attached and engaged with the brands in a long lasting relationship. So the, let me say, I don't want to say the revolution, but the evolution that Web3 brings in the space is that users or consumers keep control on how they want to selectively engage with each single brand in a meaningful manner. While in the Web2 and Web1, they were just spammed by you know, inbound calls, by emails, newsletter, and, uh, and push notifications. The Web3 provides more user control on how do they want to stay engaged with the brand. And at the end of the day, this technology enables to exchange value in a meaningful manner. So the journey that we have enabled is to start from the first interaction, which is having a Web3 wallet and make a payment. And from that moment onwards, via rewards, via collectibles, via NFT, with uh, uh, meaningful experiences, we are enabled to pave a new journey that we can sustain over time with brands. And that's, I would say, the most uh, important uh, uh, value element uh, we bring in the space uh, as an innovation. And you, you know, you, you guys commonly refer to um... Uh, digital bits is the kind of the, the blockchain for brands, right? So now if we're talking about assets, right? So we talked about, you know, we, I was telling you before uh, we talked to Omar Ansel from Fireblocks, and I know you guys are partnering. They handle pretty much all pure financial transactions. So uh, maybe for, our, for our audience uh, who may not know, what do you deem a digital asset? What do you, what do you deem? Um, being a layer one, so digital bit being layer one, uh, obviously it's capable of uh, uh, creating uh, from a technology standpoint, uh, creating uh, any um, any token or any coin on top of uh, the digital bits layer. So when it comes down uh, to work with Fireblocks, and Fireblocks is essentially a custodian, okay, it keeps um, um, the coins that are being created on the chain safe and secure. So what Fireblocks today is doing is uh, enabling uh, um, the, uh, the custody of every new uh, custom assets built on top of digital bits. So for example, let's say there is a brand, whatever the name is, he wants to create his own branded cryptocurrency, okay? 
in order to enable this and to securely uh, create an asset that people can trust, then we need to have an element of, uh, of, of integration with a custodian that make this process safe and secure since the beginning. And this is what Fireblocks is, is doing. And obviously, Fireblocks, it keeps a, a lot of reputation in the space because you know it's the leading custodian in, in the crypto space. Yeah, I, I like the idea that they, you know, your keys are yours always, but they're distributed in, to three different nodes or three different uh, uh, holders. And um, to me, that sounds like a good solution. And if I had a nickel for every time I'm like confronted by a financial, a Web3 financial company, and it's like what, the number one question I ask, uh, Daniel, is who holds the keys? And if they say, oh, we'll hold the keys for you. No, thank right. you. Bye bye. Um, so Fireblocks is one of the few organizations and subsequently uh, Digital Bits and yourself that yeah. are actually offering that not only a layer of really amazing layer uh, one protocol application, you're adding that extra layer of security and peace of mind, even for, you know, and, and, and that's super important for our listeners to understand is because if you're not the sole custodian of your tokens, uh, or your your keys, you're you're not they're not yours. So that's hyper important, and that's why these are kind of special projects. Yeah, but, and this is uh, um, there's um, uh, this is something that has been done with them. Digital Bits uh, has a feature um, which enables the creation of custom assets with full trust uh, by you know the the issuer those that created this coin let's say you know the ip owner say the brand for example they created they mint uh, i don't know let's say one billion tokens and uh, and those that eventually we receive this token have to have to trust uh uh the those that have created this token so they need to create in digital bits term is called trust line without going too much in the details but so Digital Bits has a feature saying, if uh, uh, you create a coin and me, I want to get a coin from you because you sent to me, I need to trust you. These uh, element of trust, <coughs> sorry, is, um, is kept, first of all, is enabled and it's kept under custody by Fireblocks. So, which is, uh, and this is something, you know, has been announced uh, uh, a year ago and, uh, and that's one, you know, very, very important trust um, element. And the second one is that uh, Fireblocks enabled functionality that uh, if for whatever reason, uh, the Fireblocks business model uh, doesn't longer work and Fireblocks is at, at risk to keep on existing, uh, the system keep on working forever. So this means there's no risk, there's no single point of failure which is connected to the relevance of the business they're running or the profitability they're running, but it's, uh, they provide uh, a full resilience no matter what. And that's, it's, you know, it's, it's very important to, to somehow to provide assurance to the community that there's no existential risk or a single point of failure that in case something goes wrong, everything blows up. And, and this is being kept sure. That's super important because there are tons of partnerships being made across the Web3 universes and different layers and different protocols. And if one falls down, you don't want the other ones to, to topple like a domino. Uh, so that layer of security yeah. and peace of mind is, is always good. So now, you know, like you talked about the, the assets and technically anything could be a digital asset that lives on Digital Bits platform. Uh, I'm really interested in learning more about how brands, who, what brands, and how yeah. brands are actually using digital bits currently. Yeah. So we are. Um, so we started to. Um, so an announcement uh, was made a couple of weeks ago with uh, you know one of the leading football club in the world, which is AS Roma, um, that has integrated the digital bits as a means of payment into the, their flagship stores in Rome. So the, yeah, and, and, and that's, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's been announced fine. Uh, what's, what's really important right now is to really measure consumers' feedback and how this plays out for real. Because, 
you know, there's tons of a press release and, and, and announcements about, you know, new retailer adopting uh, um, a cryptocurrency or um, a digital asset as a means of payment, okay? But uh, in the industry, we have uh, very, very, very few, I would say, KPIs or I would say metrics which show us whether consumers are willing to adopt these as a means of payment, okay? So what we, what we do see here is that, number one, so crypto method of payment introduce an, an, an element of innovation which is new to the space, which is uh, giving um, um, an immediate reward, so which, is, which takes place at the time of the purchase, is not delayed in time. You pay now, and you get now 10%, we call it crypto back, okay? So this means only if you pay in crypto, and let's say you pay in 100 XDB coin, which is the digital Bitcoin, you get 10% crypto back in the wallet in a matter of seconds. So it takes two to five seconds in average, okay? So number one, speed, uh, immediacy, uh, which, which happens. You know, consumers say, it's fine, I have cash back already with a credit card. I get 2% back by the time I pay with cash over time. Yeah, it's fair enough. But first of all, the 2%, it's a, it's a batch process. And secondly, from the brand standpoint, what is interesting is that by the time they have done a transaction on chain, because payments are settled on chain, so the brands want to re-engage with the consumers on the Web3 and Web3 only. Why? Because uh, all of them, no one excluded, told us at certain point in time, we want to introduce collectibles, okay? But collectibles means you need to have a wallet. You need to have a place where you can host these and you can transact uh, easily. And I can tell you, for example, today, if we compare the payment experience with the traditional, you know, FinTech wallet versus the Web3 wallet, Today, Web3 wallets are not matching the user experience. Why? Very simple to explain. How you pay today with crypto, you pay with QR code, right? You, you scan a QR code and then you pay. A QR code, from a consumer's perspective, it's old technology. You want to pay in an F NFC. They just want to you know, pay straight as they go in a matter of seconds, getting confirmation without you know, using a camera to scan it, okay? Now, we're really working on the next of the next of the next step because we're getting feedback about that. And crypto, from one angle, it sounds a very resilient solution because of the speed, it's cheap. There's no, I would say, middlemen or middle layers in between. It can immediately settle on chain. That's the good part. The bad part is that we're working is that we need to match the user experience of the most used method of payment. And... Uh, if I'm talking about we, when I say we, I'm talking about the players in the space, really focus at matching the best possible user experience with the plus factor that Web3 brings, I think it will be very interesting to see how these will grow over time versus traditional methods of payment and traditional methods of engagement between brands and consumers. As you were talking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, how many 2.0 or normie uh, rewards points systems do I have through my bank, through uh, technology, you know, outlets or whatever it may be, different venues you go to or whatever. And it's very confusing, even like for techie people, it, it, it's, it's less confusing and more annoying. Did you sign up for it? Here, you're getting constant emails about it. You're getting badgered to up your, you know, your your credit card rates, uh, the more you spend or whatever. And the shopping experience that they, quote unquote, offer is really janky and, and f fairly limited. And it, it takes a while. It's clumsy. It's really, really clumsy. So what that said, Daniela, is are you so, you know, part of digital bits is an actual wallet or do you accept plugging in uh, other or working with any wallet? It's a, it's a, it's a very good question, uh, Rich. Um, so right now, so there is a, one integrated wallet with digital bits, it's called Asrax. And um, obviously there are plans uh, to integrate new wallets in the space. And uh, so obviously the wallet 
uh, the wallet direction, it's, uh, you know, it's a continuous improvement stream. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, the goal right now uh, is, to, is to make sure that the ecosystem expand vertically in the sense that, uh, you know, brands embrace this technology uh, to enter the Web3 and to enter the metaverse uh, with a, you know, sequential sets of steps. Um, starting from payments. Mm-hmm. Payment, uh, it's, it's a great use case for crypto uh, because it can enable a better user experience. And right now we have, if you can see the user experience, it's, it's split in two. You have the user experience, which is driven by the technology stack, which is great. And you have the user experience, which is driven by the application that you build on top. And I think the second part, you know, can get better. And uh, because at the end of the day, um, you know, the focus, the focus on crypto right now, it's mostly to, to, to do, you know, what has been uh, to, let's say, to focus at, uh, um, at the use case that have been validated in crypto, which essentially um, coins and wallets mostly to hold the um, um, assets that can be exchanged over a secondary market. This is a proven use case. So there's liquidity in the space. This is a proven use case. It's, it works, you know? There's nothing to say about that. But when it comes down to, for example, thinking uh, uh, in the future about how can I make sure that, you know, collectibles, for example, can be easily traded, can be exchanged, as uh, today you can do with uh, any crypto asset, okay? So this means you need to foresee or anticipate an element of liquidity, an element of secondary market, which already exists in a way, but have to be expanded uh, in order to uh, enable all all this value creation um, with any type of asset, not necessarily with trading coin, but also with payment coin, with a utility coin, with collectibles, with NFT. Today, there's a lot of you know uh, brick and mortar solutions. Uh, the goal uh, we are having uh, within the framework of the project is to make this extremely easy for brands and consumers, and uh, it should be we call it a one-click experience. People should not even see or foresee or perceive that there is a blockchain. They should not know whether it's a Web three, Web two, Web one. It doesn't really matter. People should use it, and the technology itself should mask all the complexity, which gives relevance to what we want to achieve here. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, what I was saying before is that's a gap, like logging into something or having to go to a website and do all this mumbo jumbo for for a lot of these, <laughs> you know, two point uh, programs. It creates a delay and a gap between engagement, and if things, I'm if, like to your point, if I'm getting results back instantaneously, I'm going to move on it. I might buy something more. I might add those rewards points to something even better, Um, you know, whatever it may be. Now, with that said, Nenele, are you, you guys are creating, and this might be the next step or part of the the first phase of what you're doing with Digital Bits, but are you creating um, brand-centric marketplaces? So now we spent our money, We've got some rewards. We got literally tokens uh, as a reward or 10%, as you mentioned. Um, and now I want to go and say, hey, you know, uh, I'm, we're going off with gelato and some coffee. Um, let's go down the block. I just got some. To- can I spend it here? Or can I go on and buy uh, perhaps a pair of headphones or something like that? You know, physical. Absolutely. So that is the goal. So. The whole ecosystem uh, that are going to be plugged uh, within this technology framework have the same um, the common denominator, which is uh, uh, to create a layer of interoperability, which is multi-brand, which is uh, you know which involves uh, both consumers and marketplaces, and uh, and uh, you know technically there's no limit into this, okay? Because the uh, and the limit is not really. Um, um, related to digital bits technology, because you can even pull or plug uh, liquidity from other blockchains, okay, uh, and and bringing into this chain. For example, um, you can have a Bitcoin, and uh, so we're working on a wrapper uh, to create a, a kind of a container of a Bitcoin into the digital bits chain, 
So as eventually, if you have a fraction of Bitcoin and you want to buy the loyalty point, which is being issued on the digital bit chain, then you can self-contain your Bitcoin. It's not yet available. We're working on that. Uh, and then and, and buy that coin uh, or that uh, uh, reward point or, or convert this reward point in order at the end of the day uh, uh, to do something else with another brand. So the, the key here is that, uh, and it's not a matter of uh, explaining, uh, you know, why you have to do, why you have to use blockchain or digital bits or branded or custom asset or digital bits. No, the goal here is to make things simple for users and to drive a great user experience that provide something more that people don't have today. So you don't have to explain why you have to use a blockchain. And I'll give you an example about uh, the crypto bank. Okay. So there is a, there, there, there's brand, it's, you know, you might have seen many times that provide an X percent uh, uh, discount coupon. If you subscribe to a newsletter, you subscribe, you get 10%, you know, coupon code, 5%, 50, whatever amount is it. If you subscribe, that is a transaction. It happens one off, you get a discount, you buy something, it's over. You know, how do you engage over time uh, with that consumers? So in that case, you send emails. It's kind of an you know, emails newsletter, okay? So, and at the end of the day, you send information that eventually someone will pick up and then you might have a conversion as being a brand. This is different. Why is different? Because if you transact uh, as of day one, and then you get 10% crypto back, this is value. You get immediately. And you don't have to do anything more next. If you see a product of value, if you see an element of value, either collectible, either an experience, either interaction, anything you decide is, has value, then crypto is a means to get something more that you can let be a traditional method of payment or interaction. So in fact, is the user that choose whether crypto provides more value or not, and not someone telling you, if you do something, I give you a discount. So it changed the paradigms, how fans and brands or consumers and brand interacts. And the goal here is not make a transaction and just give discount for free and that's it. The goal is to create this uh, funnel of interaction that obviously leverage the, the Web3 wallet because the Web3 wallet allows peace of mind, custody, safety, uh, uh, and security that traditional solutions don't have. The reward, the crypto back, you can see this as the first step of this uh, long lasting journey. Mm. You know, from my, my edification, because there are lots of different rewards points, platforms popping up here. There are brands going direct, literally directly through Web3, direct to consumer uh, with tokenization. And who's on, you know, Solana or, or whatnot or different platforms? How does that convert? And how do you maintain a stability in the currency? I know you were talking about a wrapper around a, a, a Bitcoin. How does that work? Because in normal, like, Web3 land, my head goes to, oh, well, it's converted into a stable coin or something like that, that the platform actually, you know, hosts and that's how you, you transact. But it sounds like it's a kind of a seamless um, multi-chain, yeah. multi-token uh, type of scenario. That's really interesting. And that, to me, really keeps the, keeps the wheels moving, keeps people engaged. And there's no slowdown like, oh, do I have to flip this? Do I have to convert? Do I have to do that? Am I going to lose money if I leave it in my account and don't convert it or something like that? You know, how does that work? Yeah, all of this... Uh, um... It's, uh, well, it's simple to say, it's more difficult to do, which is, so if you take a coin, whatever the coin is, you know, um, and I'm not talking about stable coin, I'm talking about, uh, um, let's say a payment coin, uh, like digital bits. So a coin um, is a subject, so there is a perceived value, okay? And uh, which is uh, subjective most of the time. And my duration and duration doesn't really matter. What's really important from a layer one project, there's only one dimension that really matters, which is on-chain uh, on utility. So, 
And I explained over an AMA, I think I've done um, a few days ago, and I was saying, you know, we have been talking, you know, very recently about inflation as a whole. And inflation like, you know, you increase the supply of a certain asset, which is not matched and which is not balanced by a, an, an increase in the production output on the, on the other side, then you create inflation. So you create a, an, an imbalance in a way. So for layer one, what truly and really and only matters is how you drive on-chain utility and on-chain traffic. So this means if the project is good at driving on-chain utility, anything that happens in the back doesn't really matter because you're really building lasting value. The issue starts from uh, when you have a layer one project that has the ambition to build on-chain utility and it doesn't, okay? So in that case, it's difficult uh, to, keep, uh, uh, to keep focus on the value creation and value retention, okay? So this means if the project is successful at uh, ensuring that consumers settle and using whatever asset minted on the chain, and then they use it, and you can see it tracked on chain, and you see a volume of transactions that increase over time, users that increase over time, then you're really creating value. So the unitary price uh, does not really matter if you really have arguments in place to create uh, on chain value. So, why Bitcoin, you know, why? So, coming back to Bitcoin, for example. You know, the only metrics that uh, that really matters is that you want to see you know, the number of transactions of Bitcoin or eventually the number of wallets on Bitcoin growing over time because it means there is a chain adoption. So, and, and, and that's a long-term predictor of value creation. And that's what really, really matters. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, so we, we talked kind of about the, the consumer journey and kind of, what digital bits is about now I, I always like to look at it from the brand side right so if, if we look at it from the inside out what is the experience like uh if if i'm nike or you know uh, adidas uh, you know adidas and i want to spin up sneaker tokens or or something like that um do i have full control is this self-serve is this a self-serve dashboard that i'm creating spinning up creating campaigns perhaps or do you have a, serve, a group of folks that help service and build out for uh, individual customers? I mean, it's a great question, actually. We've been working today about the, the, these very specific use cases. Um, so there's no, if you're asking me what is in place today, so there's no self-serving API or self-serving work package that people can use saying it's plug and play because we just integrated, uh, uh, so Digital Bitcoin on retail store uh, two weeks ago with uh, AS Roma. And uh, we are really, really among the first in this place uh, to really entering into this uh, consumer retail, uh, you know, payment use case, uh, very, very focused on brand adoption. So, I mean, uh, expectation is uh, this year to mature to this extent. The technology is moving really, really fast. <clears throat> if I look back three months ago in, We've done a lot, a lot of developments uh, on the technology stack. We are currently working on uh, on a protocol upgrade to support uh, uh, decentralized exchange and automated market makers straight on the chain. So with the deployment of liquidity pools straight in the protocol. Um, so, but yes, I mean, I, I, if you're asking me, how do you envision, you know, brands to enter in this space? Uh, you expect them to work in a kind of a bespoke manner with any layer one project? No, I don't think so. I mean, 2023, yes, because uh, I think, uh, I mean, I'm talking about big, big brands. Uh, they right now, they want to step, they want to enter into a multi-step journey. So they're not going, uh, you know, all in saying we do everything with this, but they stay, they, they, there is use case that we see a quite common across uh, multiple brands, for example, collectibles. It's a uh, it's pretty common use case for for big brands. Some of them already announced, you know, Amazon already announced, uh, you know, an NFT marketplace and, uh, you know, other, you know, big, big companies uh, already announced, signaled the fact that, that they want to step into it. Obviously, this player, 
when ants enter the space, they they enter big. They don't, you know, they don't they don't want to try and just show the market. Eventually, they're going to try it. No, and uh, I feel that layer one projects um, are, are working in, you know, the other other layer one project. They're building API, SDK, and and technology stack to ease the adoption. So to ease, let me say, the self serving approach for new brands uh, to enter in the space. I think 2023 will be, you know, project like ours will catch up in building this technology stack to create a kind of a, a self service API um, as of next year. That's one angle. The other angle, which is very important not to disregard is wallets, because at the end of the day, wallets, it's part of the branding experience. So, and, uh, it's if you see from a holistic point of view, you say, okay, you have your own wallet being, you know, digital bits wallet, you are brand A. And the brand speaks uh, in a very specific language. And uh, the wallet is one of the key uh, uh, user experience component to really make this journey successful and lasting over time. And, uh, you know, the, I expect uh, some cool developments in 2024 and 2025 about uh, how we think non-custodial wallet and, and how can we really play with uh, customized or more personal wallets that today uh, don't exist. Because today wallets are doing a good job. You know, you can transact with the wallet, you can, you can do on-ramp, you can do off-ramp. So they address some uh, very specific use case, but they're not a user experience rich in order to cope with the needs of the, you know, the biggest brand of the world that really think in the user experience and user centric mode. And to me, the sole service API to define custom uh, loyalty reward scheme or inter-exchangeable reward scheme is one aspect. The other aspect is uh, it's uh, obviously is the wallet and how really they differentiate the user experience to make this journey really, really consistent with their branding experience. Yeah, and that's the part that I'm super excited for and interested to see the most advancements is through is, yes, there's wonderful projects being developed and reward systems and beyond. But what is that wallet experience? I mean, yes, we all use wallets every day. And it's like, okay, it's slinging money back and forth. Maybe you've got a couple of NFTs in there, or whatever you're doing, uh, maybe some smart contracts, or whatever you're sto storing. Um, but truly, when it becomes super like gooey and usable and seamless, where your rewards are kept here for digital in your digital bits wallet, um, NFTs are kept here. You know, there everything has a little bit of a home. Transactions are kind of seamless. I want to swap this. I want to send this to someone else, or I'm going to Open C or whatever it may be. That experience is super, super interesting. And that's what's going to keep people engaged for sure. Now, yeah. Daniela, the, the, you know, I know you guys are stockpiling a few really interesting brands or working with already. And I, you know, I hear you got you're working with MotoGP, right? Yeah. Can you can you give us a little sense of like the people you're working with and actually how they're they're currently or planning to use? digital bits uh, for marketing, advertising, yeah. sales, ticketing, whatever it may be. Yeah. So, I mean, the the partnership uh, uh, with uh, one of the MotoGP drivers um, is called Fabio Di Gian Antonio. He's a, um, he's a, he's a driver of, uh, um, of a Grazzini team, uh, which is a Ducati team. And uh, Fabio, it's our product ambassador we're very proud to say that he's a he's the first of its kind we have a very ambitious plan and uh, today you know he's done uh, very nice um, Instagram stories by um, showcasing uh, the signing uh, uh, the signing session that is going to uh, is going to take place in the next MotoGP race which is which is happening this weekend in Portugal and um, so what is going to happen here, just to give you a context. So uh, MotoGP, you know, as a, as a sporting category, has a very fit audience uh, with the crypto industry. Uh, millennials and Gen Z, you know, um, um, as a whole. 
so and and Fabio um, has a, uh, has a very strong product focused mindset, saying uh, he loves crypto, but he said I do find complicated to explain others how to use it. <coughs> so and how this partnerships is going to play out is that Fabio, there will be twenty one races this season in MotoGP across all the globe. And there will be, so the sprint race on Saturdays and there will be the race on, Saturday, on Sundays. And there will be signing session, okay, on each race in, in each of these countries. So in each signing session, there will be a unique kind of uh, poster that eventually will become a digital collectible in the future with a QR code uh, which enable on board uh, eventually um, users that are willing to touch this technology. Um, which is the Digital Bits wallet and eventually Digital Bits coin, because Fabio will create exclusive merchandise, physical and digital, that uh, will be explained uh, to users uh, over this uh, uh, period of the partnership. And uh, I, I mean, I'm trying to repeat all the time this. This is a product partnership, meaning Fabio is the first ambassador which is involved into product design and product engagement and he is obviously so he's, he's a, our ambassador yeah yeah but that's something no, he's new acting like a guinea pig right <laughs> he's a guinea right. pig right uh, awesome right. Uh, i think that's amazing and you know hats off to fabio because he gets it even as a single man you know uh moto gp driver he is the product it's about all about the bike. It's about him, his, his mystique, his skill. Um, and I, I love that he's adding that layer of ownership, like digital ownership to his personal brand and, you know, potentially to do down the road to Ducati and everyone else. Um, that's fascinating. And I love, I love that there, you know, he's getting into it and I really like, you know, he, he could be the catalyst for other drivers. Absolutely. And that was, um, I mean, we put, um, uh, we put this into, into the press release. The goal is to hear, you know, show the product first and, uh, and uh, explain uh, in, in very simple terms uh, why this product um, drives change and improve uh, our life. So there's no element of... Uh, you know, the coin itself. So everything starts from a need, which is uh, I want to engage with the content, I want to engage with the brand, in this case, uh, with Fabio. And uh, I want to do something which I feel has an element of value. I want to do, that's the key, I want to do, I want to play out with the technology. And then, so the experience here is not I buy, is, is not a transaction. I buy something and I go, okay? So here is uh, how we make sure that, uh, you know, people from day one of the signing session, which is, you know, branded digital bits, people will download the wallet and will engage with Fabio's uh, products, content, and eventually collectibles in the future. Um, you know, how can these um, be enabled uh, from a simple interaction, which is download a wallet and do something with it. Yeah, fantastic. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of MotoGP GP a little bit, you know, not so much, but I, I could just see other clubs, soccer clubs, football, whatever you want to call it, even in the United States. I, I'm dying for all, and they're, they're, we're, you know, the United States is doing this with some of their ball clubs. You know, each, each player is a collectible and all that good stuff. But I think, you know, with digital bits, it goes well beyond. And I think... Uh, you know, digital bits and together with F Fabio is, is he, he's seeing that it's a much longer journey. It's not just about trading cards. It's no, about I mean, I suggest you, if you can, uh, yeah, if you can go to, um, you know, on, on his Instagram profile and you check, yeah. you check out his Insta stories. I mean, you're going to see uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, poster, uh, which is very stylish and there will be, um, you know, I don't want to anticipate. There will be a lot of surprise for Fabio Di Gian Antonio fans. And uh, I feel also for the MotoGP fans, because that would be really, really, um, really, really exciting for, you know, tech, uh, uh, tech enthusiasts, but also MotoGP um, addicts. 
Yeah, yeah, and 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 now it's the fans can grow with the sport. You know, it's really kind of kind of interesting, and I, I really like that. Um, yeah, and the key here is a. Uh, I mean, I, I wanted to say this, I've forgotten. Um, so the one of the achievements uh, that you know want to drive here within uh, the MotoGP um, category, which we're talking about the category of fans with with Fabio. Um, is that uh, typically motorsports have a lot of excitement across events, in this case, 21 races. But then over the remaining days or weeks, and obviously the engage goes lower because obviously it's difficult to sustain at the same level of excitement over time. Now, I'm not saying that the vibes you're going to have in the race you sustain with a collectible. What I'm saying is that you need to have an enabler which creates a journey of engagement that goes beyond social media uh, by leveraging a technology which allow exchange of value. Now, <clears throat> it's a matter of starting this. And I think these, uh, what we're doing with Fabio is the first of its kind, for sure, in the MotoGP category, never happened before. Uh, in the Formula One, for example, there's OKX, which is doing a phenomenal job, and uh, which, you know, entering very aggressively in the space with some very strong, valuable element. They're doing great marketing. <clears throat> and in our humble view, um, we're trying to pave a new way of interacting with, uh, um, with a MotoGP driver, in this case, Fabio, with an element of product uh, interaction. Let's see how this is going to play out. Yeah. That really interesting, and, and and thank you, you know, for for kind of framing the, the digital bits universe for us. And, you know, now I know, like, okay, it's procedural. Things are growing. You're building the kind of the rails right now, and then you're going to build the, you know, the the trains on top of it, um, and it'll be, you know, very fluid. And that's what you know. People like myself are very excited about. I like to nerd out about the, you know, the ones and the zeros and the the Web three tech stuff. But really, it's uh, I just I want to see so many people get on board, and I think by you know beloved sports stars and other products that people love, you know that's going to be the on road for them. What what do um, you know? We're going to as we kind of wrap up a little bit here. What do you see? What's the next step? What is the next year look like for you guys? Really, in a, in, a, in a kind of short and sweet statement um you know there's a um i would say uh, just to give a context on what happened and you know what what you feel makes sense uh, to happen um so over the last period of you know period of times so over the last months there will be an extreme focus at um, engaging with brands and mostly from a partnership standpoint uh to showcase in a way that uh, you know brands are in you know, they're willing to embrace it and they want to do it, whatever. But the next step is uh, much more on uh, how you make sure that, you know, brands using this technology, adopting this technology, uh, they bring uh, fans and consumers on chain. So, and all this, it's, uh, it's kind of a step, the next step, which is, uh, you know, making sure this technology is used in the real world and in a meaningful manner so as it can drive or it can enable a net positive impact to our economic growth so this means um you know there's no doubt about the fact you know blockchain and, and crypto keep on growing in terms of uh, users in terms of adoption and it's kind of an organic process okay uh, what really matters for us is that, you know, we need to bring this in the real world so as people can, can talk about blockchain and crypto not as a bad thing, as, uh, you know, sometimes or very, early, very often we hear, uh, but it's like, I mean, this is something that helps me to do something and I give more value if I do this way instead of the other way. Instead of 
you know, uh, you know, talking about this technology as a subject to volatility and speculation and other, you know, negative elements. And I think that's a key factor also from the mainstream media standpoint, because, uh, you know, brands, the main intangible assets they have is their brand equity. So, and their reputation. So, and obviously they want to embrace a technology that give trust and confidence. So, so, and the trust and confidence is driven by the fact that people have a peace of mind in using it because someone else already using it is the catch 22. So the focus here in order to make sure it's widely used uh, is uh, we are the ones uh, to make adoption uh, possible. And, uh, you know, that's uh, adoption possible means at the end of the day, user experience and product developments. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, well said, Daniela. Um, <clears throat> and it is really because 90% of what guys like you and I do all day is education. So there's awareness and education, number one. There's adoption. And how is adoption done now? It's not really hanging around the water cooler. Uh, you know, if you are around the water cooler today, it's like, hey, did you see the latest? Uh, did you see Fabio race in MotoGP? in the latest race. Yes, it was on channel such and such. What a great race. It was a really exciting. Now it's, oh, well, I collected a 30 second video clip of that as an NFT. And now you're sharing it and your friend will say, what, where did you get that? How did you do that? And now it's cool. Now you got a wallet because you just blasted it over or sent him a <coughs> QR code. Instantly he's in, he's connected to, you know, Fabio and MotoGP, and he's in. And, and to me, that's like, let the consumers, everyone is like, a lot of developers are just saying, you know, you got to use this because it's great. And, you know, technically you're talking to, to other developers. You know that, right? Designers and, and other um, Web3 folks, put, you know, pushing the envelope. And those are, the, those are your doctors. Really what you want to do is I'm at work on Monday morning. I saw the race. I want to show it off. I want to, you know, I want to have something from Fabio or that race. And now let let the uh, let the consumers be the ambassadors, you know, and, and share and make it viral, not in the in the social media sense. Maybe there are social media components to attach attached to this, of course, probably always going to need that for for generating buzz. But the, the idea of holding up your phone and going, look what I did, or look what I've got. You want it? I'll trade you. What would you get? Or I'm completely new to this. Get me on board. Um, you know, I, I often say, you, you know, he or she who, who creates the most amazing, fluid, open, uh, and utility-driven wallet wins. <laughs> That's, you know, um, in, in a nutshell, uh, you know, Whoever's going to open up lots of doorways for transacting, and I'm not even talking about just coins, you got the app now. That's a transaction, and that's what you want. That's very exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, you know, and it starts with Fabio, and he's courageous, and I, I love that, that he's like, he's putting his neck out there with you guys and saying, this is new and it's fresh, and I think my generation and my fans are going to like this. So cool. We want to see more and more of that. He will help. Uh, he will be. He will be instrumental. Uh, you know the technology and 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 this is this industry and to advance. So people like him, because you know he provides um, a fresh perspective, and uh, from a, from an angle of a motorsport category. You know, and and you know if you take MotoGP as a sports category. There are 20 drivers in the world. So 20. And he's one of these. Okay. So this means he's a, he has a, a big brand influence in a way. I mean, I, I want to call it as a super brand or a superpower in a way, because uh, uh, we do see the world from uh, the technology standpoint, trying to do our best to see from the consumer standpoint. But uh, he brings a, uh, a totally new, fresh perspective on uh, on uh, how to catch up in a way that uh, is in the best interest of the fans. 
and it's not like uh, in the in the only interest of a brand that obviously might have his own uh, its own uh, perspective. So Fabio really brings uh, a fresh and new mindset in the, in the space. That will be. I mean, I'm really puzzled. I mean, I'm really I would say buzzed and I'm really I would say pumped about uh, uh, the start and uh, and uh, you know I'm really really looking forward to how this is going to develop. Um, you know beyond. It's really cool to see people like Fabio. Um, you know, there's maybe a few actors or sports people who actually understand that they are themselves the brand, the product. And me seeing this shows me that people, even outside of the tech world, are saying, I want more ownership of my personal brand. I want more ownership. I want to be able to have a tighter connection to my fans uh, and and to almost communicate and transact with them directly. So I think that's wonderful. Um, we need more people like that. The goal is, uh, sorry to interrupt you, the goal, you know, I remember the first discussion with him. He's a, he's a leading, uh, I would say, his leading thought was, I want to give more to my fans. Okay, I want to reward more. That was the former idea. How can I do that? You know, how can I do with social media? You know, I can I can post the stories, I can say thank you, but you know, I can get to a certain level. I cannot go beyond, you know, because there's no element of a value that people perceive uh, that they can keep hold of it and then eventually exchange it. And that's what you know this is about. Yeah, and and this is th this could be high, very high, obviously very high touch, immediate high touch, <clears throat> with a very personal spin on it. You can have generative NFTs or collecting things that are all different, you know, and unique. And I think that there's a real craving for that, both on the brand side and the, the consumer side. And we're, we're starting to see it. You know, we're starting to see people adopt and roll on because of their brand affiliation or love of a specific brand or person or, you know, um, character, if you will. Um, and, and that's great. Uh, we're all about, you know, and I think people are starving. They're sick of the, the Instagram ads and the whatever it is and the TikTok stuff and all the platforms. You know, they, they want, it's all flat. It's all flat. No, no matter how, you know, sexy or glossy your campaign is, it's very flat. And you're not really, you know, really reaching out to, to your audiences. Yeah, it's a matter of, yeah, it's, a, it's um, I think it's, I mean, I want to spend, uh, um, you know, I commit myself uh, uh, to do, you know, podcast AMA on a, on a weekly basis as much as I can. Because here, um, there is a, there's a lot of importance into the education process in, in, in the good way, meaning that to give, and to give full context about what's going on in the space. Uh, uh, and uh, there's a lot of things, you know, going on in, in crypto. And, uh, but I think crypto right now, especially 2023, is in the process of, you know, bringing soar more, sorry, real world utility in a way that people can really use or consume this technology uh, in a in an everyday life beyond uh, you know one use case I said before you know coins have been extensively traded and that's a use case that you know under no doubt you know crypto has enabled and obviously for good you know and and then you know whatever subjective uh, uh, perception any one of us might have but it's a proven use case where crypto coin are being traded no doubt about it but uh, how many of those coin are really being used in the real world? To do something, to transact, to exchange values, it's way, way less. So the funnel drops uh, dramatically. And then, and 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 for us, and specifically for me, I mean, I'd like to spend more time on educating about what's going on in the space and how people can really spend more time in educating themselves on why eventually they can embrace this technology for their greater good. And that's you know what I commit to doing. Awesome. Yeah. You're, you know, it, it's all, uh, you know, we like talking to folks like yourselves and product owners like yourselves who really get it. Um, we preach the idea of, you know, the board apes and the, 
the <laughs> NFT, you know, apes are really great, but it's all you haven't seen anything yet. As soon as you see utility brought to you every single day, you're going to start to use it every single day. I think so. It's going to make yes. more sense. Um, <clears throat> not that I have anything against, you know, visual or uh, audible uh, NFTs. It's all great. I own them too. Um, yeah, I mean, but... uh, so someone was saying that, you know, art, if we take art as, you know, collectibles as a form of art, you know, is a market that has certain depth and sites. But here we're talking about something way bigger and uh, uh, way more, I would say, meaningful uh, from a net positive economic point of view. So that's why, I mean, that's uh, to me collectibles and, and NFT. It's kind of a, it's a niche. What it's more, what it's, uh, uh, what is bigger is that, you know, how brands leverage these, uh, 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 let me say retail experience to really enhance meaningful interaction with, uh, with fans and consumers. And that's to me, it's a marketplace. It's a market space. That does not exist today. There's something new. So this means that you know there is a there is a I would say infinite opportunities over there. And I'm glad you brought up the the idea of it. Really, it, it is it, it is a marketplace. It should be your wallet should be a marketplace. And there's nothing really like that just yet. And you know, speaking to to guys like you, we 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 know it's coming and it's all great. The only thing, and I, I always bounce back to it, it's not the best analogy, but WeChat. So if you go to China, everything is done within one thing, texting, messaging, social media, payments, um, shopping. It's done within one thing. You know, for me, I would love to have that all-inclusive wallet. Like, my money is here. I'm shopping here. I'm collecting things, and everything is neatly wrapped. There's one security layer. Uh, there's, it's not all over the place in 10 different websites across 10 different, you know, 100 different servers. Uh, that's really, really exciting to us here. Um, you know, the Daniela, the, the, you know, as we wrap up here, uh, and thank you for your time, of course, is there, is there a place for us and others out there listening to committee jump on a beta? Or, you know, do you have a beta team uh, early adopting type of scenario i mean there's no beta here so the technology is in you know it's fully working so meaning that um you know the first step uh, to get accustomed to technology is to uh, download the astrax wallet which is connected to digital bit chain there is a possibility uh to connect to the test net which is a sandbox environment just to uh just to make some tra test transactions at the end of the day, I mean, uh, the good part here is that if you do see an element of utility, which is driven by any uh, uh, digital bits uh, related coin or digital bits coin, then the user should find uh, uh, the way to interact with it. And uh, at the end of the day, the first step is to download a wallet and uh, connect to the testnet account and make some test transactions. And then... Um, have a look and you know what digital bits project is doing uh, uh, which products uh, somehow are leveraged by uh, digital bits technology and then if there's an element of interest interact with it right now focus it's uh, on on the retail side so the first integration um, we address on the physical retail stores now working on uh, on uh, e-commerce and, uh, you know, for example, in, in the football industry, one of the interesting use cases is ticketing. And uh, because ticketing, uh, it's a long lasting journey. And ticketing, it's a scarce by nature. So if you want to watch a match, there is just, I don't know, 70,000 or 60,000 tickets, not more than that. So which you create an element of scarcity, uh, it's not programmatic, it's by default, the way it is, and uh, which can, can create a very interesting uh, combination of uh, uh, value-driven interaction with time. So you buy a ticket and something else happened. Let me say it like this. <coughs> so, which is something does not exist today uh, to, to our knowledge. And, uh, you know, not to anticipate too much because this is a use case, obviously, which is currently under development. But uh, uh, the best way uh, to, to get in touch with digital bits 
is to is to use the technology. So download the wallet, and then stay tuned on the products which uh, connects digital based technology and use it. Perfect. And uh, for everyone listening in, you can learn more, get involved. Actually, you know, to Daniele's, uh, you know, uh, last statement, you know, get your hands into it and start using it and pushing it around and playing. That's um, the beauty of free. Yep. And it's free. So uh, yes. you could do that at digitalbits.io. Um, yeah. So digitalbits.io is the website. Yes. Correct. Absolutely. And Daniele, um, you know, the Web3 team is very interested in, in platforms like this, specifically this one. And we're very interested in some of the brand partnerships that you're doing. And obviously, you know where I come from, very cut from a very creative and design uh, background or cloth. Uh, that customer journey is going to be everything to me and my team. We want to see that. We want to touch it. With that said, I would say let's get you back Let's get you back on when the, the product is further down the road and we can kind of do a proper show and tell. I think that would be wonderful. Sure, you know, I would be extremely excited to, um, you know, to come over and, uh, and, and show some nice development that we have partially anticipated today because at the end of the day, the common goal we have here is uh, uh, to bring new technology, uh, to bring this new technology down on earth <laughs> in a meaningful way. And product uh, experience and user experience is everything. So I'm really, really excited to come back, Rich, and, and you know, brainstorm and talk to you about um, next steps. Yeah, absolutely. So you know where to get us. We know where to get you. Right. Um, everyone else, go and, and uh, you know, digital, digitalbits.io. Go and experiment and um, drop them online if you have questions. Become part of the, you know, the beta testing team. Jump into the sandbox and get your hands dirty with it. So... Uh, and okay. expect more from Daniele uh, in Web3 sure Impact in the near future. Daniele, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, we know you're on the other side of the world, uh, mm -hmm. but that's awesome. And uh, we really appreciate your time today. And uh, we look forward to, to, to what, what comes down the road for you guys. Thank you, Rich. And, uh, you know, I feel blessed to be invited and to have joined you and uh, this amazing podcast. So we'll be very happy to come back and developments. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perfect. And ciao, ciao. Ciao. Thank you. <laughs>